In this video, I would like to talk about the Canon EOS 2000D. So a few years ago, I purchased this camera for deep sky astrophotography. And over the past few years, I've been using this camera for deep sky astrophotography, for planetary imaging, and for lunar astrophotography. And in this video, I would like to share my experience with you. So I personally think that this camera is well suited for deep sky astrophotography. So in this video, I would like to talk about the camera itself. After that, I would like to talk about advantages as well as disadvantages between a DSLR camera like this and a dedicated astronomy camera. After that, I would like to talk about uh, a few um, camera settings. I prefer when using this camera for deep sky astrophotography. So I would like to talk about um, the perfect ISO value for less noise in your file image. And after that, I would like to give you my final opinion about this camera. So if you're considering getting this camera for deep sky astrophotography, this video will be helpful to you. All that and everything right after the intro. This video is not sponsored and not being paid for it. All products shown in this video were purchased by myself, but now I would like to start. Something that is very important for you to know is that all images shown in this video were captured with this camera. So this will be really helpful to you on deciding whether this camera is actually great for astrophotography. First of all, I would like to talk about advantages and disadvantages between a DSLR camera like this and a dedicated astronomy camera. So a big advantage when using a camera like this for astrophotography is that everything you need to capture these objects is integrated in this camera. So you can actually capture those images, you can save them in the camera itself, and you can look at these images on your display. So everything you need is integrated in this camera. When using a dedicated astronomy camera on the other side, you need a special software to run the camera. So you can, for example, use the CWO ASI Air Pro or in computer. But when using this kind of camera, you have everything you need. For sure, you can use the, the camera in combination with the CWO ASI Pro 2. But when using a dedicated astronomy camera, you have to use the software. Another big advantage of using a DSLR camera like this for deep sky astrophotography is the price. So if you compare the price between a DSLR camera and a cool dedicated astronomy camera, you will quickly realize that those dedicated astronomy cameras are quite expensive compared to DSLR camera. So I bought this camera for approximately 500 euros, but when buying a dedicated astronomy camera, most time you have to invest more than a thousand euros, which is actually pretty much. Furthermore, this camera is not that heavy. So especially if you're using a smaller star tracker, for example, it's very important that your camera is not that heavy. So these are a few um, advantages of this kind of camera, but for sure there are as well a lot of disadvantages. So that's why um, those professional astrophotographers are using dedicated astronomy cameras. And that is definitely noise. So when using a dedicated astronomy camera, uh, those cameras are cooled, which results in less noise in your final image. A DSLR camera on the other side has a lot of noise in the final image. So as I already mentioned, the big advantage of using a dedicated astronomy camera is the cooling. So when using a DSLR camera, you will have a lot of noise in your final image, especially when, when photographing those objects during a warm summer night, you will get more noise. In winter, this problem is not that relevant because it's rather cold and therefore the sensor is cooled as well. But this DSLR camera has actually less noise compared to other cameras. However, on the other side, those dedicated astronomy cameras, they will have less noise even during these summer nights because they have a cooling system. So using these dedicated astronomy cameras will definitely improve um, your images when it comes to noise. But however, this camera performs well in deep sky astrophotography. As I already mentioned in the beginning, I would like to talk about camera settings. I would recommend when using this kind of camera. So I would like to talk about the ISO value. So over the past few years, I've used uh, this camera at, at different ISO values, starting from ISO 400 up to ISO 6400. And I have realized that the best ISO value for deep sky astrophotography is actually ISO 800. In summary, we would like to talk about a few advantages and disadvantages of this camera itself. So a big advantage is definitely the price. Another big advantage of this camera is that it's not that heavy and can therefore be used even on smaller star trackers as well. A disadvantage of this camera is the display itself. So you can't move for the display. So for example, when the object you want to photograph is not that close to the horizon, it's very hard to look on the display. And therefore, it's not that good, but still you can capture great images. So in summary, this camera is great for astrophotography. It's affordable, it's not that heavy, it's very user-friendly, and you have less noise compared to other cameras. At least this is what I have tested over the past few years. So in general, I definitely 
would recommend the camera for deep sky astrophotography and you can even use it for, for planetary imaging and for lunar astrophotography and even for landscape astrophotography. So in general, I really like this camera. If this guide was helpful to you, I really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so, so much for watching. Until next time.